I really like thinking about, in addition to um, that wonderful, very comprehensive sort of definition, um, I like thinking about the evolution of it as well. And um, I know a mutual friend of ours, Dr. Mark Matson, who is a great neuroscientist, um, used to be at the NIH, and now he's where he's an adjunct professor where Jed currently uh, formerly was at um, Johns Hopkins, and he he to some degree. Um, I'm referring to him because I, I've read a lot of his, you know, papers, and I recently interviewed him on my podcast um, a couple of months ago. And he talks about a lot of these phytochemicals in um, an interesting way. Some uh, certainly, like not all of them, but like some of them, as these plant insecticides. So these plants have evolved a way to produce chemicals that can keep insects away and from eating them and destroying them, and um, so a lot of these phytochemicals or, or, or plant insecticides in some cases will affect the nervous system of insects. They'll kind of make them a little like, you know, wonky so they can't figure out to go bite the leaf, you know. And so um, humans have have evolved ways to to basically ward off the potential toxicity of any of these insecticides by activating a variety of genetic pathways. Um, you know, to, to, you know, get rid of, you know, the, the, the toxic, potentially toxic plant insect insecticide and to activate, you know, a variety of anti-inflammatory pathways and antioxidant pathways and um, the pathways that are act activated to detoxify in some cases. Um, some of these plant phytochemicals have a variety of benefits that come along with that. So um, as, as the expert, Dr. Jed Fahey knows, one of those pathways would be the the NRF2 pathway. And so um, I really I really like thinking about those phytochemicals in that way because we've we've evolved this genetic way to to it's like we were meant to eat these phytochemicals. We were meant to eat these plants and they do amazing things when we eat them. They're changing our genes, the way our genes are activated, and they're doing um, enormously beneficial things by doing that. So um, like that's to me is so fascinating that, you know, we're, we're, we've evolved these mechanisms to, to basically not only handle the tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of stress from these phytochemicals, but we have a net positive effect by activating these robust antioxidant, anti-inflammatory pathways and these detoxification pathways. And, um, so, so to me, that's like one of the coolest parts of it, right? about these phytochemicals they all often think about it as antioxidant itself like you're getting vitamin c or alpha tocopherol one of the major forms of vitamin e and it's just not the same at all so i did my postdoc with dr bruce ames um, and at the time when i joined his lab they were doing research on something that they called the cori bar at the time and it was a it was a bar that Mark Shiganaga, um, uh, a good friend of mine who's just brilliant gut researcher, and um, Bruce and a few others, Joyce McCann, had come up with a, a, a way to get a broad range of micronutrients. So we're talking vitamin D, fat-soluble ones like vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids, they had DHA in there. They had, you know, magnesium, B vitamins, you know, just, just like a panel of like the classical micronutrients that a majority of the U.S. population is got insufficient levels of, but they also added some phytochemicals. They had some, some of these polyphenols from chocolate and some other phytochemicals in there. But with Mark's, you know, insight, he said, well, we need a, we need something that's like a food matrix. We need something that's like a food matrix that can mimic like what, what a plant would do if it had all these micronutrients and phytochemicals there. And so he, he came up with um, certain types of fiber, um, HPMC is one, and, and they, so they, we, cl clinical studies done on this bar, um, fast forward, they were trying to do a deconstruction trial to figure out, okay, what happens if you give people the Cori bar, this, this micronutrient bar with just the micronutrients or just the, the phytochemicals or uh, without the fiber matrix? And what if they give them the fiber matrix without the chemical, phytochemicals and micronutrients? And what they found was that you needed the whole package. The benefits that were found with some of the biomarkers of lowering inflammation, increasing HDL, lowering some of the um, bad parts of LDL, small dense LDL, those didn't happen when you did just one or the other. You took away, 
it, the micronutrients and the phytochemicals and everything needed the food matrix there. And I, that was just a great study um, because it really does drive home that concept of, you know, this food matrix, this fiber matrix where you get all these micronutrients is important. It's important, very important. And so um, there's, like you said, we, there is synergy going on. There's additive effects. There's things that we don't understand. We don't know why, but it seems to be important to have the whole package. 